is a game that's a lot about self-expression. How you leave your mark on the world. Chicory is um, and a kind of a top-down Zelda game in a coloring book world. It's a black and white world with animal people in it, and there's this magical brush with the power to color the world in. Um, and that brush is wielded by this famous, legendary artist named Chicory, who's like a super celebrity. Uh, everyone loves her, but at the beginning of the game, uh, Chicory disappears and all the color in the world disappears with her. So you play as Chicory's number one fan slash janitor, uh, who in her absence decides to take up her brush uh, and fill in the world while also trying to figure out basically like what happened to Chicory and why all the colors disappeared. The starting point of the project at the very beginning was just kind of wondering if I could make a game where the player's main interaction with everything was drawing. And yeah, it just makes for this really unique kind of game that I hadn't seen before, where you're on this adventure, we're telling you a story, and like, moment to moment, the way you interact with everything and what you're doing most of the time is just making art uh, and drawing stuff. So that was kind of the goal, and like, everything around the game was kind of built around like, keeping that sacred and making sure that was always like, supported and like, the thing that we wanted the player to do. There were a lot of games that influenced the structure of Chicory, but there weren't really any games that I feel like I could look to um, for some, like for some of that basic idea about doing art stuff. Like there are a lot of games that have drawing in them, um, like Drawn to Life or Art Academy or The Blob, like a lot of games that are kind of about art. Um, but in a lot of those games, art is either like not really about making art. Like in De Blob, it's like you're just splashing color everywhere or in Splatoon, like you're shooting like terrain that you can swim in. So there was nothing that really kind of had that perfect mix of like, you walk around and draw and that is like how you interact with stuff. So there was hard, it was hard to find something that, that did that. The honestly, the game that um, came closest as an inspiration for that stuff was my previous game, uh, Wander Song, because that was a game where you could walk around and make music all the time. So it was like this game kind of felt like a natural extension of that concept where the player is on an adventure, like doing creativity stuff, and that those, and those things kind of mix together in that particular way. But like there were tons of inspirations, like especially Link's Awakening and Animal Crossing, and even a bit of Splatoon for sure in this game. Those games inspired way more kind of like the framework and structure that held the whole thing together, like the pacing and the player abilities and how areas fit together and like what the player actually does and what kind of problems they solve. That stuff kind of came from other like more established games and genres, but kind of that core concept about walking around and drawing, I hadn't seen anything like it before. The entire project, I think, was about two and a half years, maybe closer to three, from like the very first idea to when the game uh, came out. I was sort of a director, programmer, writer uh, on this game. I worked with Alexis Dean Jones. She did all of the character art and animation, and she like read over all the script as well, and was like a really close member of the project. Who just kind of like talked with me through a lot of the story stuff. Um, there was Madeline Berger, who. Um, used to work, or like came, came from kind of the comics world, like they drew a lot of zine stuff. Um, in this game they drew all the environments, so like all the trees uh, and like houses and just random props and stuff in the backgrounds. That was drawn by Madeline. And the game is super influenced by their art style and like their wiggly line work. Uh, Lena Rain was the composer, so she did all of the music and score. And then M. Halberstadt directed the audio sound design, so stuff like ambiences, all the pink loops. She worked along with Preston Wright, who did all the sound effects for like boss fights and action sequences. Um, and they both worked like for a company called The Shell in the Pit. I kind of provided a high level direction for the game, so like early on, I figured out the game was going to be black and white, um, and that wasn't that wasn't like one of the early decisions. Surprisingly, it took a while for me to realize that the game was going to be black and white. But once I did and realized that it was going to be based on like line work that you color in, 
that's when I realized that Madeline, um, who was my roommate at the time, would be a perfect fit because their artwork is like insanely cool uh, and just like really, really cool line work. And I just had a feeling that their work would look really cool in a video game world. So I gave them sort of a really ugly screenshot to draw over. And then they just drew like this amazing wiggly like zine comic world over it. And then Alexis, um, who is just like an amazing character artist and designer who like loves to draw animal people. She kind of drew animal characters that would fit into that black and white world. And she like would do all the character designs basically from scratch. The basic process would be that Alexis would just draw like just tons of sketches of lots and lots of characters and then just give me like pages and pages. And then I would pick out my favorites and say, oh, like we got to use this one, this one, and this one. And the rest would basically get thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have my own kind of like idea notes of like oh there should be a character who asks you to draw a t-shirt or oh there should be a character who like needs your help coloring in their house or whatever like some like just ideas for quests and things for characters to do and then I would kind of would kind of be like a you know like draw the line and match these things up where it's like oh here's a bunch of character designs here's a bunch of like game design ideas what character would be really fun to go with what game design idea? And you kind of match them up and you say, oh, well, it'd be really funny if this like nervous looking lizard is the one who teaches you how to erase because she doesn't like what you drew. Or like, oh, it'd be really funny if this like little like beaver with the glasses like is the one who's like the really difficult to please townsperson who like doesn't like whatever you draw for him or whatever, right? So we kind of would like figure things out that way. Lana is, is just in general really amazing. You know, we would have conversations about, you know, like what I was looking for in a certain piece and I wouldn't be afraid to tell her when something didn't quite fit, I guess, the tone that I wanted. Um, but I mean, what makes Lena amazing is that, and this is this thing that makes her different from other composers that I've worked with, is that she, she composes from a really like emotional place. She really cares about the story of the game. So where for another composer, like I would be giving them like, oh, I want to have these sort of instruments in this kind of genre. For Lena, like, the direction really would be like, oh, like, these characters are feeling this kind of way, and, like, the story, you know, like, this is a scene where this thing happens, and, and these characters, like, like you know, end up feeling this way at the end of the scene or something. That's the kind of direction that she would take and then use that to, like, make a really, you know, like, all the other decisions she could make really expertly, right? Like, she could pick instruments that were great, she could compose something, like, yeah, whatever, amazing chord structures, all that stuff. kind of see it as like there's there's kind of two key ideas because there's really two main characters to the game so like the protagonist pizza their story is basically saying that like anyone can be an artist <laughs> like it's a story of a person who you know doesn't like comes from a different world who doesn't feel like they belong like holding this brush feeling this responsibility and, and making art for people and over the course of the game like they have to learn to be confident in themselves and you know, learn what they really want out of life and learn like what their value is as a, you know, creative person, even though they don't feel like they are. Um, where for Chikri, it's like, you cannot be an artist. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, she's this person who's like super talented, who has all this pressure and history on her, um, who made art before and is like kind of unlearning, you know, the need to like keep have that pressure on herself uh, and is like learning to take her time and I guess like, you know, learn learn to take life at her own pace or learn to like find other things that she can, you know, like enjoy, I guess. Something something like that. Um, but there's really like there's a lot in it and I think there's a lot of openness to how players interpret stuff and that's really intentional because, you know, these are themes that are super broad that I think everybody has some of their own experience with. And it's really like we're not I wouldn't say that we're trying to say any one specific thing or give any one specific answer to like what you know, like, I think we're, we're more trying to like like raise questions and give players a space to kind of like consider this stuff for themselves and how, how this stuff fits into their lives, right? Like I don't really want to say that you should act or be a certain way, um, which I guess is reflected by these two different characters who were on two totally different journeys uh, <laughs> surrounding the same central conflict. <laughs>